So hi everyone and welcome to this video on uh, on our discussion on monopolies and today we're going to discuss a concept uh, which is the main objective of a monopolist. So uh, in theory we believe that the main objective of a monopolist like any firm is to be able to maximize its profit and uh, to do that we need to identify how we're going to determine its revenue and its costs. So for our example, let the monopolist's cost function be C, okay? And C is some function of Q, okay? C is some function of Q. And we can define a concept called the marginal cost, which is the additional cost uh, per additional unit. And uh, this, is, this derivative pertains to our marginal cost. And we believe that that marginal cost is positive, right? Because any additional unit will increase the cost that the firm or that the monopolist in this case will incur. Okay, now from the last video, we know that the market demand is P. It can be expressed as some function of Q. Okay, and we know that revenue then, since we have our market demand, is just R, uh, is just revenue, which is equal to P times Q. So that's P, which is a function of Q, times Q. Okay, say it chooses to set its uh, out uh, its price rather than its output, then uh, we get revenue, which is also some function of Q. Okay, now how do we get total profit? Well, total profit is essentially okay, is essentially just revenue minus cost. So that's profit is equal to revenue minus cost. Then revenue is some function of Q. And then cost is also some function of Q. Therefore, our profit is some function of Q as well. Okay, Q. And uh, as we said, the main objective of the monopolist is to be able to choose okay, a level of Q okay, uh, that maximizes its total profit. So in this case, it's choosing a level of Q. Okay, and it wants to maximize okay, the profit with respect to that level of Q. So the objective of the monopolist is to be able to maximize okay, profits subject to some level of Q, okay, which is equal to revenue minus cost, which is which are both functions of output in this case. Okay. Now, since this is a profit maximization problem, our FOC is that uh, the derivative okay, of profit with respect to Q is equal to zero, okay? Which implies that marginal profit is equal to zero. Therefore, any additional quantity, okay, will not incur an additional profit. So that's the last quantity that, uh, that a monopolist would choose to produce. And its SOC should be that the second order derivative of Q, uh, of profit rather, with respect to Q, Okay, should be negative to ensure a maximum. Okay, so those are our FOCs. That, that's our FOC and our SOC. So let's now zero in on the FOC. Okay, so the FOC okay, requires that, okay, as we said, that the derivative of profit, which is some function of Q with respect to Q, okay, that's essentially, okay, this is marginal profit. And we can express marginal profit as essentially, okay, that's the since profit is just revenue minus cost, that's just the derivative of revenue minus, uh, minus the derivative of cost, okay, Q over DQ, okay, so we have those two there, and it implies that that should be equal to zero. So again, marginal profit, since profit is just equal to revenue minus cost, can be broken down, okay, this derivative here is marginal revenue, and this derivative here is marginal cost. Therefore, it implies that MR minus MC is equal to zero, or MR is equal to MC, okay? So this is some key condition, some key condition that we're gonna use, okay, for uh, the duration of our discussion on monopolies. And it implies that at MR equal to MC, 
that is where the profit maximizing Q exists. Profit maximizing Q. Okay. And note that uh, for the FOC, so we have our FOC requirement, since production is costly, again, we say that marginal cost is something greater than zero, then it must be that marginal revenue at the profit maximizing Q, at the Q that we get when we equate MR is equal to MC, should be that the elasticity of the market demand uh, for the profit maximizing price output combination of the demand curve should be at a price elastic point. So this elasticity is greater than one, which suggests that the monopolist always chooses a price elastic point on its demand curve. And we'll show this graphically in the next video. Okay, now let's turn to the second order condition. Okay, so our SOC again requires that, um, so we have the second order derivative of our profit function. Okay, and again, since our profit is just revenue minus cost, this is just equal to second order derivative of your revenue less the second order derivative of your cost, okay, q squared. And we believe that this should be less than zero, okay, because it ensures a maximum that way. So if you notice, okay, this derivative is just d, the derivative of marginal revenue with respect to q. This one is the derivative of marginal cost with respect to q, okay? And uh, if we uh, put this together, that's dmr, over dq minus dmc over dq should be less than zero or or it should be that the derivative of marginal revenue with respect to q should be less than the derivative of marginal cost with respect to q again we have a key condition here which suggests that the slope of the marginal revenue curve that we will draw later on is less than the slope of the marginal cost curve. Okay, so we have those two conditions there. Now, we assume, okay, we assume that the MR curve is downward sloping. Okay, as we said in the very first video, in our first assumption, marginal revenue is uh, downward sloping. In this case, the SOC for a profit maximization is automatically satisfied when MC increases with Q, so when we have this condition, or when MC is constant for all, okay, so for all Q or that condition. However, if MC increases with Q, i.e. we have this condition, the SOC requires that the slope of the marginal revenue curve be more negative than the negative of the slope of the marginal cost, i.e., that the MR curve be steeper than the MC curve or, or key, M, the MR curve intersect the marginal cost curve from above the marginal cost. So we're going to get into how this factors in graphically in the next video, but I just hope to emphasize that these are the first and second order conditions that we have for a monopolist. Our first order condition stating that marginal revenue is equal to marginal cost at the profit maximizing Q. And that the SOC requires that the slope of the marginal revenue is less than the slope of the marginal cost. So thank you for watching.